What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. Today we're gonna to talk about what I think are the top five best Pokemon in VGC 2023 Regulation C. But before we do that, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. That's my comment question of the day, which is going to be, what Pokemon do you think is the single best Pokemon in Regulation C? And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. If you guys enjoy this at any point in time, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let's get into the list. So, what I want to start out with is actually going to be my number five, and this is going to be a little bit surprising for a lot of you guys. Ting Lu is at number five. I'm going to spoil it right now. There are no other Ruination Pokemon on this list. So what makes Ting Lu stand out from all the others? I think that one of the best archetypes you could be running right now, um, you know, Wo Chen incentivizes people running stall teams. Um, Chi Yu incentivizes special attacking hyper offense, and uh, Chen Pao incentivizes physical attacking hyper offense. Ting Lu on the other side of things fits on so many teams that it is like a it is a staple of balanced teams. If we actually take a look at Fort Wayne regional results, we see one, two, three, four Ting Lu's out of top eight. That is huge. Now, a lot of Ting Lu's, um, it, it's a Pokemon that like has a lot of options, right? Um, but a lot of Ting Lu's will opt to run Fissure. While I think that Fissure might eventually drop out of usage over time, it's still a reliable tool. And you guys have all heard this song and dance before, but I guess we'll go over it really quick. Ting Lu is a Pokemon that is bulky enough to run the combination of Fissure and Stomping Tantrum. Yes, Hippowdon technically is also bulky enough to run the combination of Fissure and Stomping Tantrum. But the difference between these two is that Ting Lu has, you know, a similar attack stat, Similar physical defense, but it has much better special defense, thus making it easier to stay in the field for a really long time. And it doesn't have the same amount of utility that Hippowdon would. Hippowdon, like, yeah, it could run Fissure and Stomping Tantrum, but it also wants to run Slack Off and Yawn. And if you're running Yawn, you want Protect. So usually it's just like Protect, Stomping Tantrum, Yawn, Slack Off. And sometimes you'll even drop Slack Off for like Whirlwind because like that's a decent tool. Really, it's Yawn that makes this thing not want to run uh, Fissure Stomping Tantrum. And it's just not as bulky as Ting Lu. So Ting Lu here, actually, what, what was Hippowdon's uh, HP stat again? 108. Yeah, no, Ting Lu's just way bulkier physically too. Um, Ting Lu is just so bulky, it can sit on like the field forever. And we see there are a lot of teams that run it. Uh, while it didn't make first or second place, we see it in literally third through sixth so you can see that there's sort of a common core going on there's a lot of names you could call this core i'm not gonna call it faap because a lot of you guys got upset with me after i called it that last time we'll call it ting lu balance so ting lu balance tends to consist of stuff like ting lu amoongus uh arcanine fluttermane palafin you can also call it Pala Balance. Palafin Balance is usually like the way it's like described more. Uh, but Ting Lu seems to fit on the team as about as often uh, as Palafin does. And the last Pokemon is up to your discretion. Um, you know, Arcanine can be dropped. That's technically I think a thing that you could drop. But usually it's like you know you want to keep Arcanine for the Intimidate. Um, the last Pokemon it's usually just a physical attacker because in a lot of situations you don't really want to have the anti synergy of Ting Lu with two special attackers. Arcanine's physical. Amoongus is technically special, but it's not really an attacking Pokemon anyways. Fluttermane is special. Palafin is physical. You can deal with Fluttermane by just not having Tinglu in the field next to it. And the last Pokemon is usually just going to be one of our heavy hitters. Baxcalibur is like really common on this core. Um, other like common physical attackers, King Gambit is going to be on there. I've seen some Dragonite um, in the past and honestly like you could just really put any strong physical attacker on there. I think Roaring Moon you can make a case for. You could even, if you're like super crazy, make a case for like Slitherwing if you want to get like really wacky with it. Like, hey, now I beat all the other ruins. Point is, this is like a five Pokemon team. Four if you like get rid of, I don't know, Fluttermane or Palafin. They both feel very essential, about as essential as Ting Lu. Uh, but yeah. Ting Lu also has uh, a lot of support options. While I did say that Hippowdon usually doesn't run Fissure because of the other support options it has, Ting Lu doesn't really need to run like Protect in a lot of situations. The Assault Vest is a really good option for it. Um, it has access to Snarl, which is going to increase its longevity. It has Heavy Slam, which is, I would say, almost essential uh, for beating opposing Fluttermane because you can invest to beat that thing pretty easily. In, in fact, if we actually take a look at um, 
Ting Lu here. It's the number four most used Pokemon. Uh, they're usually Assault Vest, and the most common move is Stomping Tantrum. As a matter of fact, Fissure has double the usage of Protect, which is really funny. But yeah, uh, another really important tool that this thing has access to that, of course, all Ruination Pokemon have access to is going to be Ruination. Ruination is basically just Dark-type Super Fang, so it is... Let me take a look at something really quick. Hold on. Let's look at like Tapu Bulu, Nature's Madness. How much PP does Nature's Madness have? Or hold on. Let me change to like National Deck so I can look at that. Nature's Madness, 16. Okay, they're the exact same. So um, it's it's just better Super Fang because Super Fang can't hit ghost types. So it, yeah, there's no reason to even distinguish it from Nature's Madness, because nothing's immune to Dark and nothing is immune to Fairy, so like there's not really a difference there. Cutting the HP stat of anything in half makes it so that like a, a do-nothing Pokemon like Ting Lu can do something every turn of the game. You can go for Ruinations versus Pokemon like uh, Arcanine, which typically will be super bulky, and the Arcanine will go down to half health. That'll put it in range of like a Shadow Ball from Fluttermane, a Jet Punch from Palafin, etc, etc. Um, also, that's just like a really useful tool versus opposing Dondozo. Dondozo is a Pokemon that it can take hits from full, uh, and on the physical side it doesn't really care, but versus stuff like Specs Pokemon like Fluttermane, you actually do have to be pretty careful to make sure that you have enough HP to eat those Specs Moonblast, the Life Orb Moonblast even. And Ting Lu being able to go for a slow Ruination and then follow up with a fast Moonblast, Shadow Ball, whatever, uh, does make it like a very solid answer into Dondozo. Granted, you do have like a good Terra type. Speaking of Terra types, uh, this thing's usually going to want to run Poison, in my opinion. However, we have seen it actually run stuff like Grass and um, I've seen Fairy once and Flying as well. Uh, and there are a few different reasons to run each one. Personally, I think that the high usage of Glamora will make you want to run uh, Poison in most situations. However, if you want to be more positive into Great Tusk, I think Flying is just as good of an option. Uh, and Fairy is sort of like neutral into a lot of things. So yeah, uh, Ting Lu. Things that it beats. Arcanine it technically beats. Uh, it, it beats like everything really. It has Fissure. It can beat everything. Uh, it can switch in on Fluttermane and eat a hit. If you go Terra Poison, that Fluttermane's never going to break you. Uh, Heavy Slam does good damage into Chen Pao. Uh, it can one-shot Flutter. It can deal with Glamora, Iron Hands. It's just like a really solid ground type Pokemon. So yeah, that's why it's going to be number five on my list. Next up, on my list, let's just clear all this out. Why not? Let's just clear all it out because we're going to start with a new Pokemon. It's going to be Great Tusk. Now, I think Great Tusk is objectively better than Ting Lu. While they don't share a common role other than being a Pokemon with access to physical ground moves, I do think that Great Tusk is more splashable than Ting Lu is on hyper offense. And balance, while I did say, is like probably the best team to run right now if you want to just learn the format. Um, Hyper Offense does pretty well too. Uh, we don't see a lot of Great Tusk representation in top eight of um, Fort Wayne, but if we do take a look at like day two generally, we see Great Tusk, Great Tusk, Great Tusk. It is a pretty common Pokemon to run with a few things. Uh, it's actually like really good on Sun right now. So basically what Great Tusk wants to do in a lot of situations is just threaten everything on the field. You can achieve this with a Scarf, um, in fact, if you're running like Choice Scarf, you can afford to run Adamant because you still hit 139, meaning you're going to outspeed like Fluttermane. You can go ahead and just hit like an attack bump here. You can see we go from 195, 196, 198. That's the attack bump. And then you can just invest in like a little bit of bulk if you want to make sure you're like living hits. Uh, you have access to Headlong Rush, Close Combat, uh, Rock Slide, and the last move is usually Ice Spinner on this set. If you're not running Choice Scarf, if you're running like a Life Orb or a Focus Sash, you usually run, uh, you usually run like Protect and possibly Earthquake. And Terra Ground's like a really good uh, Terra for this thing because it just makes it so it breaks everything and it also loses its fairy weakness. Uh, but you can also go with a defensive Terra. Fire's not half bad, but Steel is probably going to be uh, a little bit more usable so you don't like lose to Palafin because Palafin is like a very good Pokemon right now. Spoilers, you're going to see it later on in the list. Uh, and we can see here that uh, Great Tusk is currently at, da, 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 da. I think it's a little underrated in terms of usage. It's 13%, uh, putting it below like Tatsugiri and stuff, but it is still a very good Pokemon. We actually saw this thing basically be the face of Series 2 VGC um, or Regulation B 
But that same like core that it worked on, Tailwind plus Flutter Main plus like any kind of speed control uh, and like just offensive Pokemon still functions. Like we see it used next to Sun Pokemon. If we take a look at some of the more uh, interesting teams here, uh, we see that Justin Knox here ran it uh, with a Torkoal and a Jumpluff. You see the synergy here, Covert Cloak Jumpluff can't be faked out. Uh, you have access to Chlorophyll Boosted Sleep Powder, Encore Tailwind, which Tailwind is going to be really good next to this Choice Scarf Great Tusk. Uh, a lot of Talonflame won't want to stay in on it because they're going to be threatened by Rock Slide, which means you just get to go for your Tailwind Rock Slide. Uh, Chen Pao also synergizes really well with it because uh, while they do, you know, share a common weakness in Fairy, if you're running Scarf Great Tusk, you don't really have to worry that much about Fluttermane unless it's the speed boosting variant. And many of them are actually just running special attack boosting uh, bulky. So by pairing it with Chen Pao, you like basically always KO Fluttermane because they can calc to live in Adamant Headlong Rush. Uh, but yeah, it is just solid in everything. If we take a look at common Pokemon that you're going to encounter, for one, Ting Lu gets annihilated, Chi Yu, Fluttermane, they all get annihilated, Chen Pao gets annihilated, Arcanine gets annihilated, Iron Bundle. If it's not Speed Booster, which they usually are, but if you can threaten that out, it gets annihilated. Palafin it won't KO with Jet Punch because of how good a physical defense um, this thing has. 115 HP, 131 defense. But it's still going to like not enjoy taking a close combat or a headlong rush. Glamora is annihilated. Iron Hands is annihilated. Wo Chen wants to tear a poison, so if you can manage to make that call, it's gone. Gyarados is really the only true counter in this like top whatever Pokemon. I, I would say it is the only true counter. In Don Dozo, while it will uh, be able to eat the hits pretty well because of its good physical defense and plus two after Tatsugiri enters its mouth, it's still not gonna enjoy eating those hits. So yeah, in like the top most used Pokemon, we see that Great Tusk is still one of the most threatening Pokemon in the entire metagame. So just put some respect on it. I really do think we're gonna see more Great Tusk down the road. Uh, and obviously it had a lot of representation in day two and top eight. So, well, not top eight, because there was only one in top eight. But you get my point. It's good on Sun. Number three on my list is going to be Mr. Bax Caliber. This thing is scary. Let's take a look at that top uh, of that top eight from Fort Wayne. There are two Bax Caliber, but in day two, we see one, two, three, four, five. There's, there's a decent amount of Bax Caliber. And this thing was tearing up the early ladder, um, and it just like fits well on like that uh, balance core I was telling you about. So yeah, Vaxcalibur, Ting Lu, Fluttermane, Amoongus, Arcanine, Palafin. If there is a team to use to learn how to play this format, this is the one. You're going to know when to position your Ting Lu on the field. You're going to know when to do everything. So why is this really good? Well, uh, there... Yeah, all right, so Vaxcalibur is like interesting, right? It sort of relies on Terra to do anything in this format. But it is one of the best Terra users, period. It's got 115 HP, 145 attack, 92 defense, 86 special defense, 87 speed. Special attack we don't really care about. But this is a Pokemon where if you manage to get this thing to Swords Dance once, you now have access to Ice Shard. A lot of them actually stopped running um, Icicle Spear um, plus Loaded Dice because they typically want to run a different item. If you're not running Swords Dance, I've actually seen like uh, assault Vest be used, but if you are running Swords Dance, Clear Amulet is the option there. And you just put like Glaive Rush and either Protect or Icicle Crash. I think Icicle Crash is a little bit better. And yeah, uh, with this set, you can actually just go ahead and do like a, a pretty similar thing. Let's go ahead and just hit like an attack bump for a generally splashable um, set here. Sorry, I'm like speed creating a set. I'm going to mess up on a few things. I am adamant, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. Nine. Uh, you go ahead, and honestly, like you don't need that much speed in this thing. I would say that you want to invest mostly in bulk, but if you do want to outpace a couple of things after like a possible thunder wave or if like you have a tailwind up, then go for it. But really, just you know, maxing out that HP, getting a good amount of special defense in it. You can go with like this much speed to outspeed other Max Caliber, and then just go with like that. That is a bulky boy. He's gonna eat hits really well, especially with that Terror Poison. Um, and while you are threatened by Great Tusk's close combat, they're not going to want to go for Headlong Rush into you because it's sort of a risky call. They're going to lose their, um, they're going to lose their Great Tusk if they go for a Headlong Rush and you don't Terra because you're going to eat that hit and hit him back with an Icicle Crash into an Ice Shard if they are running like Focus Ash. Um, and versus Ting Lu, you just like shred that thing. Ting Lu, as bulky as it is, it doesn't want to take a plus two or even plus one uh, Icicle Crash. 
And like I said, you don't have to run Swords Dance. You can go ahead and run like Assault Vest. Uh, and that last move is pretty interesting. You can run a couple of things. I've seen Breaking Swipe. Uh, I've even seen like Terra Blast as like a, a final option. Bulldoze is another one that I've seen. But yeah, uh, Earthquake is usually like the one that I, you know, see when it's like Assault Vest though. Uh, because you can actually just go Terra Ground. And that's super scary. But yeah, uh, Baxcalibur. It functions well with Ting Lu because while it does rely on its uh, Terra to eat hits, if you end up in a position where you don't want to like get smacked by a Moonblast, uh, but you can't afford to Terra, you can switch in the Ting Lu and this thing's got the bulk where it can eat a Moonblast. Uh, into Palafin, you obviously resist the jet punches. Versus Arcanine, you can't be burned. Uh, versus Amoongus, you just threaten it with like an Icicle Crash. It is a very threatening Pokemon. And honestly, I think its best tool is, you know, Thermal Exchange, switching in on Fire Moves, you get plus one, you can't be burned, like, that's really big, but I think that Glaive Rush is the single scariest move ever. Uh, it has an interaction with Ice Shard, where, uh, if you Ice Shard, you actually don't take the double damage from Glaive Rush, it just resets it, because, like, you, you moved again, um, at least I'm, like, 99% sure that's what it is, I might be imagining that, I'm, like, 99% sure that's how it works. But yeah, so Glaive Rush, you go for it. That's a 120 base power move. Uh, there's no accuracy drawback. It is just like the strongest dragon move barring Draco Meteor, strongest physical one barring like Outrage. Uh, you go for it and you Oko basically whatever. If you go for like a sword stance, it's just dropping. And we have even seen some people innovate with like Howl Arcanine next to Bex Caliber because you can just, you know, have like a do nothing Pokemon. You can actually lead off with like Arcanine and Palafin. Um, and like swap in your Baxcalibur, or like I was saying, like a do nothing Pokemon. You can go with like Ting Lu Arcanine, swap in Baxcalibur, and go for the Howl on that turn. And then you're threatened by like plus one Extreme Speed, plus one Ice Shard, plus one Glaive Rush. It just does well into basically everything. Things that don't want to take a Baxcalibur hit. Chi Yu isn't bulky enough. Amoongus isn't bulky enough. Fluttermane doesn't like taking anything. Dragonite's annihilated. Ting Lu's annihilated. This is like the format of wall breakers, in my opinion. Like, if you're going to run Great Tusk or Baxcalibur, big wall breaker. Like, it is it is huge for your team. Next up, I, and I like how I keep talking about wall breakers. Uh, imagine I didn't just delete this entire team, because same thing, Palafin. Another member of this team is going to be my number two. I think that Palafin is one of the most splashable Pokemon in this game, and the only water type that even compares to its usage out of, like, what we see in this format is going to be Don Dozo, and that's a heavy commitment. Gyarados comes as a very close third because of, like, the support role it can take, uh, and Quaqua of All is, 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 it exists. It can be cool. I've made a video about it, but Palafin Hero here. This thing, obviously, you start off as Baby Palafin. Baby Palafin is questionable. 100 HP, 100 speed. Those are, like, the only two good stats. Bam, you switch out once. You have an Arcanine and Amoongus in the field. That cycling, like, core where you can just take whatever hit. Ting Lu also helps out quite a bit to make sure that this Palafin's able to take a hit or whatever comes in for it takes a hit. You get it out. You get it back in. Now you have 160 base attack. You have legendary stats. What's this thing's base stat total? 650. If we take a look at, like, the base stat total of Pokemon, that is literally, like, the same as slacking and higher than max caliber. You get, like, an absurdly good Pokemon. Its bulk is phenomenal, and it has access to Jet Punch. I feel like I don't need to get into too much detail as to what makes Palafin Hero so great, but I I'm sure you understand. Like, you can just do, like, a set like this. 12 speed. Yeah, there you go. Jet Punch. Wave Crash. Haze is, like, actually really important for beating a uh, setup like uh, Bulk Up Annihilate or Dondozo. Um, and your last move? Protect. You don't even need to run, like, coverage on this thing. Yes, if you run to a Storm Drain Pokemon, this thing is going to be absolutely useless for you, but it's paired with Pokemon that can deal with those Storm Drain Pokemon. Let's look at these teams, right? If you see, like, a, a random, uh, if you see, like, a random Gastrodon on the field, uh, I don't think you're going to struggle to deal with it, because guess what? You have Amoongus to sleep it, and then, like, anything to fall. Actually, wait, hold on. Now that I look at this, this is actually really scary. Hold on, wait, is Gastrodon going to be good? All right, let's not let's not get into that. I'm actually kind of scared that Gastron might be good now. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so Palafin, barring the Storm Drain Pokemon, it is scary. You can run Mystic Water on it. You can run Leftovers on it. Uh, I've actually been experimenting with Safety Goggles, and Safety Goggles allows you to absolutely shred balance teams, since a lot of balance teams, the way that they deal with opposing Palafin is getting in their Amoongus and Rage Powdering away all the hits. If you're Safety Goggles, you don't really have to worry about that. Yes, you know, a lot of Palafin will just opt to go for the Mystic Water, Terra Water, because your Jet Punches annihilate literally everything in front of you. Um, 
But if you're running the safety goggles while you are sacrificing that attack, you are just going to go ahead and like not even care about redirection. Uh, you're not going to care about sleep powder. And it's honestly really great in best of one. I'm not going to lie. I've used it a lot in best of one. I think that safety goggles palafin is better than mystic water in best of one. But that's just my personal opinion. Wave crash, nothing switches in on that. And I think one of the most important interactions that you have beyond beating basically one, two, three, like four out of the top 10 Pokemon um, is going to be actually the interaction with Annihilate. So Annihilate and Mousehold are a really common duo, and Annihilate's most common Terra is actually Terra Fire. Um, does it show common Terras on here? What do I feel like it? What, what did I think it did? Anyways, um, I'm probably like missing it. I'm probably just not seeing it. So um, Annihilate will typically run Terra Fire because it can't be burned. It doesn't care about Moonblast anymore, and also doesn't care about Chiyu Heat Wave. So Palafin being able to lead off with a Specs Fluttermane will allow you to Moonblast the thing next to the um, Annihilate and then just follow up with like a Wave Crash or a Jet Punch on the next turn. And yeah, like I said, Haze just beats Annihilate, Haze beats Dondozo. It is one of the easiest Pokemon to fit onto your team if you need a water type, especially with how heavy like switching is in VGC. It's not even a downside yet. Yeah. Oh, and thank you for the follow. Pico Saurus Rex. Uh, this isn't a live stream, but I have my thing still up. Hold on. Let's turn that off. All right. Uh, and yeah, that's my number two pick for this format. My number one, if you weren't able to guess it, it's Fluttermane. I think Fluttermane is undisputed the best Pokemon of the generation right now. Um, and that's because of like just the way people have been running it. So Fluttermane is a Pokemon that you can just go ahead and you can do Timid, Max Special Attack, Max Speed, Focus Sash it, Life Orbit, whatever. You can get real basic with this thing. You run like, you know, Moonblast, Protect, Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball. The, the vanilla Fluttermane, Terra Fairy, obviously. But this thing only really becomes scary in my opinion when you get a fat boy in there, when you get a big fat boy in there. A lot of people when we're running like modest, um, max defense, like 100 HP, and I, I do enough speed to outspeed mouse hold because I think that's actually like really important. I forget what that is. What is that? Actually, let me just look at my team I made the other day. Da, 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 da. There it is. This is a set that I've been running recently. Um, it just, it, it makes it so you like outspeed mouse hold, but you like live everything, right? Um, it, like, so Shadow Ball hits like a truck, 68 investment, like your base 135 special attack. You don't need that much investment. That HP investment makes it so you like eat special hits because of how high your special defense is. And honestly, because of how low your physical defense is, any investment in that is going to allow you to start living jet punches. It's going to allow you to start taking rock slides a lot better. It's going to allow Fluttermane to just function as a Pokemon and not really care. Um, and yeah, like I think that's like the standard Fluttermane set right now if you just put choice specs on it. Most Fluttermane are choice specs. Some of them are booster energy. In my opinion, I think... I think choice specs is better in most situations, but if you are going to lock and you don't want to have to lock, booster energy is fine as long as you like go for endgame Fluttermane, because losing that booster energy, life or boost, um, is, is going to be a little bit annoying. Uh, some of you might be wondering why would you run booster energy instead of just a life orb, and that's because you're making a, you're making a bulky Fluttermane. You want to be able to like take the hits that you think you're going to live, uh, like, you know, sucker punches from like Chen Power, jet punches from Palafin without your own life orb messing up your defensive calcs. So that's why booster energy is actually like a really good option for it. Terra's also are very important. Terra Steel Fluttermane is really good. Uh, I've seen Terra Fire. I've even seen Terra Ground at some points. I think it's dumb. Uh, but yeah, Terra Fairy is probably like the best offensive one, obviously, because you get that uh, boost to your... Um, you, you get that boost to your Moonblast. It becomes adaptability boosted. It becomes very scary. And like I said, it fits on like every team. Almost every single team in top eight at Fort Wayne had a Fluttermane. Only one didn't. You see the archetypes it fits on. It fits on Sun. It fits on Balance. It fits on like Don Dozo teams. Or actually, this is like Nails. There's a Don Dozo, but there's no, you know, um, Tatsugiri. We'll get into that in like a later video. But yeah, Fluttermane was like the single most used Pokemon in this tournament. If we actually take a look at usage stats, I'm pretty sure they're down here somewhere. Um, are they not down here? I forget what page they're on. I'm not going to bother like looking too deep for it. But yeah, you can see basically Fluttermane is sort of the Landorus of this generation. I even ran it on my team at this tournament. I think I took like 70 something, 79th. Yeah, I took 79th. I had it on my team. I had like a stall team. Fluttermane fits on stall because on stall, you want to be able to flip the switch and go with an offensive option. 
it is just an easy Pokemon to put onto every single team, every like balance team, and it hits everything. It's hard to find a Pokemon that doesn't get hit by Fluttermane. Glamora is one of the few, and even then it doesn't want to take a spec Shadow Ball that much. Arcanine doesn't want to take a spec Shadow Ball. Dragonite, Tinglu, is as like bulky as Tinglu is, it has to tear to eat the hit. Amoongus is one of the true checks to it, and Chi Yu just makes it harder to switch in on things. Fluttermane is the single best Pokemon in Regulation C, and probably going to be the best until like DLC comes around. And even then, when the DLC comes around, it's probably still going to be one of the best. So yeah, that is my top five best Pokemon in this format. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I, I feel like I did a really good job of just getting my thoughts out there. I'm usually like really bad at like staying concise with these sort of things, but I've been getting eight hours of sleep every night and it's been making me be my best me. So yeah, uh, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, check out the Patreon for some bonus content and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.